Welcome to Plow and Potato. I'm Sean Bonet. I'm Joffrey Sweet. We are coming to you high above Moscow in the Spud Pub. Welcome to the big show. Today we're going to be looking back on what Plow and Potato has done, what we're doing now, what we're looking forward to in the future. Mm. Pretty jazzed. So we're doing a, a retrospective of sorts, and then uh, what would that be, a prospective? We are prospecting and retrospecting and specting mm -hmm. all of the perspectives. So we hope you will spectate. Would you spectate with us? <laughs> all right, so man, we started Plow and Potato. Back in 68. <laughs> <laughs> the summer of 68, I, <laughs> if I recall. <laughs> uh, when we became friends, which... Um, I suppose was yeah that was sixty eight no oh. yeah mm, the no, so so yeah so we we met gloriously and beautifully are, are we gonna like is this gonna be like a how we became friends story it's got it, it. it should be a, a Sean I love you and so, then Joffrey I love you story yeah we we just have a bunch of love for each <laughs> and other. then we had a podcast to show our love basically <laughs> way back in the day Joffrey sent me a text I was like. I didn't really know the guy. Way back in the day is what, like six months ago, right? No, it was like a year ago. Oh, okay. A year ago, and I sort of knew him, but he had my number for some reason, and he said, hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is sounding very much like a dating story. Hey, you want a job? <laughs> he got my number from uh, yeah. someone. <laughs> and then he, he hired me. Yeah, yeah. And then on that, on that interview, basically, he gave me some scotch, too. You know, when, when I laughed, you made me blow out the match. No, I saw. Well, I saw you blow your bowl. <laughs> you gotta catch Continue, this, dude. You gotta catch the Spud Pub on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your story. People I'm, are just waiting on I'm tenter just, hooks. I'm, I'm waiting for you to catch on fire. <laughs> so, we became friends. I think we've got a really fun friendship. We have a lot of good conversations. Pretty, pretty free, pretty open, pretty honest. Mm -hmm. And... And we were like, these conversations are so good. Other people should hear them. You want to listen to us talk? <laughs> and so we started Plow and Potato, uh, essentially with that idea that, you know, we think we're really great. And when we're together, there's more greatness. So people should join in that. Mm, yeah. And when Sean says, because Sean is a modest individual, if I had said, uh, we think we're really great, I would have meant I'm really great and Sean's really great. Uh, which you know, I said, oh, okay, but but Sean is is modest enough that what he meant by that was together we're great. I said together. Yeah, I know. I said greatness. Just... I added an, uh, an extra degree of awesomeness. And I will, and I and I think Plow and Potato viewers uh, would agree. We have some great conversations, um, and we're great. Okay. And uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed seeing evolve has been the whole reason we really we did this is that we wanted to expand the conversation. Mm -hmm. Right to bring other people into the stuff we were talking about and document it all, and our our theme, like we we, we had in the wet culture, which is built on, and that whole thumbnail is a, a great story. But what culture is built on? We talked about the meaning of plow and potato being a Christian culture podcast that we we plow the grounds. We're trying to bring about culture ideas of agriculture mm -hmm. and then from all of that work in cultivating nurturing fostering then there is the fruit yep. and there is what we enjoy as a product of all of our efforts one of the ideas is always in the background of what we do you know with that name plow and potato is the connection you know with the, with the word culture being connected both to say to agriculture uh, but then also to cultus to worship mm. right, so worship and fruitfulness and just being a homo adorans, mm -hmm. right, a, a worshiping man, uh, that's that's what we want to talk about. That's what we want to be. That's what we want uh, the families of our friends to be. And as we're having these culture conversations that can be about pop culture, family culture, worship culture, what other cultures? Brazilian culture? Sure, if we work it in. <laughs> Poetry culture. I like the idea of, of looking back at some of the stuff uh, that's happened so far. Uh, like, for example, I had the opportunity recently to show the thumbnail to that uh, that episode on manliness to somebody. Did you show them the thumbnail? Yeah, I dude. like that. Uh, I was that in my I shared rugby the, shorts in the snow. Not that I shared the episode, but I shared the thumbnail. That's probably our greatest thumbnail. <laughs> Funny story for all of you watchers out there, those who are joining in with us. It was at that picture that I thought to myself, I'm not skinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
what a hard moment. I've because I've been a, and not that I'm I'm just I'm tubby now. I'm a little wider. My wife is a very uh, feminine, godly woman who makes things for me, and it's starting to show. But up you until know, that there point, are dudes watching this who, who are saying like you know. I do. I start my day with fifty push-ups, Sean, and my wife's very feminine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're like, you can't use that argument here. It's not going to work. Well, no, that's right. That, might, that might mean that she's my a better wife, wife is, than you my are. My wife husband. is awesome, and I'm writing a thesis, so mm -hmm. I don't have time for those. I do have time. Okay, I've got time. I'm just. I haven't been working out, and I Dude, like. You, you have all my sympathy. I just wanted to point out there. There was a little bit of excuse making there, but hey, it's there with me too. My first year of marriage. Okay, I want. I need to preface this by emphasizing I'm a that very large man very large man but my first year of marriage just look at the feet comparison yeah I'm a size 18 I'm not so <laughs> but my first year of marriage dude I had my first ever desk job and I was newly married eating regularly 60 pounds you gained uh huh that's so you're fine dude that's a lot more than the freshman 15 <laughs> we had we had some sort of doctor's appointment and I got on the scale and it said 241 I was like mm-hmm that's yeah, a you're lot, not a that's tiny a, guy anymore. That's a long way from 180. Well, I, I named the rugby shorts <laughs> moment in the snow as, as maybe my favorite uh, favorite moment. I thought you. What's funny about that picture? You in that picture is you look skinnier than I think you actually are. I think I've perceived you. Wow, that really <laughs> that really hurt you, didn't you? You're like, oh, my belly. <laughs> and Joffrey's so skinny. No, dude, you're that big. <laughs> What's your favorite, like, favorite, like, what's the first moment you think of for, like, the ridiculousness, the awesomeness, the whatever of Plow Potato? I loved the masculinity episode. I really loved the Among Us episode. I thought that mm -hmm. was really fun. And one of my favorites is actually one of our most recent, the cake one. I thought that was really cool. There's something about that that seems odd and maybe simple, like cake, like a podcast about cake. But it's just a great um, tie-in to our show about culture which comes yeah. with food the the harvest of it and we're talking about food it's almost like a theology a food episode except we we're focusing it on cake i thought that was yeah. really fun yeah the among us episode one of the things i really liked about that besides learning a lot about you <laughs> about me <laughs> yes. what does that mean uh well we can unpack that later maybe if we wish but uh but the thing i really appreciated about the episode was how the plow potato crew got involved like people from the Discord, and we got up, and, and we were all playing together. And for me, that's the, been the most rewarding. And we'll, we'll talk about this uh, in just a few minutes, guys, as, as, as we're going forward, what we're doing. <laughs> but really, like the most valuable stuff for both of us is is the community that's mm -hmm. building up around it, particularly happening happening in the Discord. Yeah. Um, because really, honestly, like we have these conversations, but we want them to flow on into our other platforms, onto the Discord, and, and just hang out with people and get to know people, uh, tell them our ideas, tell so and so why he's wrong, and then he, you know, and, and he swings back, and we have a good old time, and we would buy each other, ourselves each other a beer if we lived near each other, but we don't, and mm -hmm. it's just good times. Yeah. Thinking about plow and potato going forward, one one thing we want to do is remind ourselves and everybody what we're about. So we're a Christian culture podcast, but one of the things that make us unique is we try to be a podcast about community. Think of think of the reason why you like Plow and Potato is because you like Sean and Joffrey to be curators and leaders in a in a community where you can be with like minded people to chat about anything really, whether it be cake. Or Biden. Yeah. And there's often a very practical bent to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we've been incorporating this into our family routine, or we've been doing this for breakfast, or we've been singing this song, or does anybody have a homeschooling resource, right? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff, of, the kind of stuff that we talk about. And, you know, you, you say we're a Christian culture podcast, which we are, but we're not a cultural commentary podcast, right. although we often do comment and opine. <laughs> uh, we, we are a practical Christian culture podcast. We are a Christian culture building podcast, yeah. which is why we have that whole, you know, trowel in the hand, gun rather loose in the holster thing going, right? The chorus is from The Rock by T.S. Eliot, that poem kind of looking at the modern church through the book of Nehemiah. That's what we're about. We're about building stuff, knowing that we have to do it in a hostile environment. Yeah. 
So as we're looking around at who we are, we're thinking like, well, let's just get better at being who we are. So you might notice the couch. A new thing going forward. Mm -hmm. We are stepping back from the desk, which has a sense of command station, leaning in, digging in, to more of a lounging tone. We think, Come on in! Come on in, brother! You know what? When uh, Joffrey and I were talking about the new setup, how we wanted to position things, I said, you're going to be on that end. I'm going to be on this end. And then you're one third what of the camera. What he actually said were, Joffrey, you, you sit on the handsome end, <laughs> and I'll sit on the ugly end. Because <laughs> I'm really modest, and I like to serve my fellow brother <laughs> yeah, in Christ. Yeah, yeah. So I'm one third, he he's one third. That. And look, here you are, sitting right in between us, and we're talking in your ear, mm -hmm. and then Joffrey's you're talking in your other ear, but yeah, this like, ear's the better ear. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Kelly. Hi, <laughs> yeah, Thomas. Like that. All of you people. Warren. My boy Warren. <laughs> it's not, don't start naming people, dude. You're going to get lost. Or they'll be like, when you can only think of seven names, you'll be like, oh, they have seven seven viewers. <laughs> There's so many. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who can name it? This is like mommy and daddy's favorite. Our yeah. Favorite. So our favorites are Aaron, Thomas, and Kelly. <laughs> Sorry, everyone else. <laughs> wow. I actually do that with my own kids. So when, whenever... Is that why this love you daddy drawing existed when I popped in here? She's my new favorite. She's trying to win Papa's That's affection. That's right. Yes. No, well, it's particularly when, when, some, when a child asks for something outrageous or do something boneheaded. Mm -hmm. Then I declare that they're my new favorite. Okay. Yeah, it's a little sarcastic. I'm a sarcastic dad. Are you really? I wouldn't have got that. Here's me being a sarcastic dad. Are you friend. being sarcastic right now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. So we, we we really like this. We think this fits in with our our, our tone and style better. We were sitting. Oh, you and know what word Sean hates? By the way, Sean hates the word vibe. I so do. He should have used the. I thought is that not you? I kind of hate the word vibe. Someone I know hates the word vibe. I thought it was you. Actually, here's the thing. This is a good friend update. I did not really like the word vibe. I thought it was dumb, but I kind of like it now. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. You, so you're right. Well, that was a perfect opportunity to use Vibe. Oh, see, but I don't like it that much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or you're just not used to it. Yeah, maybe it's 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 got its foot in the door, but it's not sitting. Is it hard to like to do a show with someone who's way older but way cooler? It's kind of hard. <laughs> okay. I thought well, it might be. <laughs> I was doing I was doing a project recently and one of the colleagues working with me did something that was young. I was like, "Oh, that was a pretty young gesture, like, oh, look at look at that. And they were like, <laughs> this kind of made me feel old and lame. I've, <laughs> and look at your pot belly. Oh you my are goodness. old and lame. Yeah, I'm busting out of this shirt. So mm. we've, got our, we've got our couch. Also, we'll be looking to do more uh, community events. We've done some plow and potato parties, and we think that's what we're about. So we're going to do some yeah. more. And we're going to do them both physically here where we are in Moscow. Uh, and, but then also online. So in two weeks, and you guys will get the concrete details uh, very shortly, but in two weeks, uh, we are going to host a poetry party. We, uh, so that'll be physically here in town. In the poetry barn. That's right, in Sean's poetry barn. And, uh, and we're going to have a reading of Choruses from the Rock by T.S. Eliot, and we will drink drinks and have joyful communion with each other. Uh, on our Discord, join our Discord, y'all. If you're watching this and you're not in the Discord yet, there's a link below. Join the Discord. Or above. That's where we hang out. It might be above, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, or on the side. Go ahead, Joffrey. No, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're going to be doing a Bible exchange. Okay? So anyone who wants to participate, right? Obviously, like if you're in the Discord and you don't have a cool Bible or you don't want to do it, that's fine. But everyone who signs up for it, we will we'll randomly assign them someone else in the group and you will mail an unusual cool unique or precious bible that you own and you will receive a surprise such a bible from someone else in our community so i don't know what i'm going to say i've got a little bible a little russian bible sent by a conversation partner uh, a pastor in russia who mm. was my conversation partner during my abortive attempt to learn russian <laughs> that's pretty a pretty cool bible um i've got a couple of just you know i was, I was a bookseller but i've got a couple of, of little like early 20th century kind of leather bound things mm. um I, I do have bibles in several languages that might be fun to just have right because yeah. they're not your reading bibles 
Um, so I, yeah, I'm gonna have to I have to look around and see what uh, I've got one from like the 1870s that's signed by some family in Salem, Massachusetts. Hmm. You know, the cool little things like yeah. that. So that's the kind of thing. If you've got a cool Bible that you're willing to part with, we'll do that. But that's just an example of how we're going to be doing, like, we're going to be doing more stuff focused around our community. That's the whole reason we started this in the first place. And now we have a community. We have a community. We are expanding and conquering. Build your empire, I think, is one of the hashtags I like to use a lot. Interesting sure thing is. on the... Uh, the bi- I'm, I'm sort of on the fence about that. I'm, I'm really excited to engage. And I have a lot of unique Bibles, but I don't know he, which He's not one willing to part to... with any of them. Well, That's see, a, yeah. they each have a the story. And it's kind of like one of those things, like in a relationship, you know, do I give them the most precious Bible that I own or do I make it something more trivial? And so it's like, what if you give away some just random Gideon Bible that you got, and then here you're receiving this Bible? That's part of the adventure, dude. But don't you trust the plant potato community to be generous no, I while trust you're them. struggling I to be generous? See, I just don't know if I want to. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I don't want to. But be think like, about the story you'll be loading onto this thing. The thing yeah. you like about these Bibles is the story you have. They have. So you forward that to somebody else. It'll have that story, plus. When that guy talks about that Bible with his kids, he'll say, and then back in the day, I used to listen to this show. It's gone now. <laughs> yeah. But these two goofballs, and one of them sent me this Bible, uh, and he hated to part with it. And yeah, and then they'll, they'll be like, you know, what was YouTube, Daddy? And it'll be great. <laughs> then you'll have loaded it with more story. And, you know, when you think about it, Bibles are full of story. So those are some things to uh, expect, and those are a few of our uh, favorite episodes and and kind of who we are and what, why we like who we are. What, what else should we uh, observe about Plow and Potato? Mm. Wow, observe is a tough word, and I admit that it threw me a little bit for a loop. Retrospect, yeah. prospect, Well, I, I, I do like what's been happening with Side of Fries lately. Mm. So Side of Fries, for those of you who are unfamiliar with them, there are little sideshows. Our little five, ten, if you let Sean talk about a song, 15 minute. <laughs> videos that are just you know they're just there's one of us usually and super topical uh and you know you never know when they might come out right at least once a week it's like those lost fries in the bag you're like oh Mm -hmm. there's another one Mm -hmm. so those have been really fun and having people uh like thomas or gwen come on and do Mm -hmm. do a side of fries has been a lot of fun yeah they they've been great and we'll be looking to expand the network through there inviting people on who may not have their own platform or podcast because of time and commitment but giving them an outlet hey why don't you come talk about and and we want to be a platform for our community this really is all about i mean what motivated us to do this initially was the two of us wanting to spend more time together um but there's there's also just you know it's the community is like right behind it and it's what fuels it for us and so now that we can, we our relationship has reached a point where we can take each other for granted. So wow. now it's us wooing the the, the community, <laughs> and you know the community motivates us. The community is what it's about for us. And so we want the if you are a regular part of our community, um, and you want to do a side of fries, uh, talk to us about it. Let's let's make some plans. You film something, uh, yeah, and and send it to us. And and all of these will be relatively short, so not huge pressure to say everything there needs to be but yep. it's a way to broaden our conversation because we want to build a community of like-minded people but we don't want it necessarily to be narrow in conversation matter or even perspective there's going to be general uh, christian consensus mm-hmm. on on the fundamentals and we'll enjoy some variety as we go along yeah exactly so that's that's where we're at, the state of the potato, mm. if you will, the <laughs> retrospect, mm. the prospect. No, I don't think we mentioned, and I think we should just mention it, just as a teaser. Uh, we may be doing some live shows, Ooh. live shows on location. Yeah, that I really am praying that works out because it's going to be great for me. <laughs> Say no more, friends. Say no, Say no more. more. And I do. We do have some bad news as we close out. Mm. The beloved slogan, sign off, tagline, (laughs) let your name say it all this week. Beloved by one of us. Has been murdered. (laughs) Has been curb stomped. By Gwen Burrow. 
No. Yeah. Did I she mean, murder it? Well, I feel like Gwen Burrow gave me the weapon I needed to, to murder it. Which was? Well, Gwen Well, Gwen and I had that beautiful moment in that side of fries. Oh, yeah. There where was, she was like... There was a clarity moment. There was. There was a T.S. Eliot, trowel in hand, yeah. Nehemiah moment. And yeah. I was like, that's our theme. Why don't we say it as our And side then of- I turned around when she loved that. And she was posting about that. And I, yeah, I, I leveraged Sean. I admit it. I know. I will say as much... As vile and wicked it is as your murderous attempt uh, act was, uh-huh. the sign off was always in flux. It was always temporary. Yes. You know, we invited our community to participate. So we and- got some awesome and some ridiculous ideas, <laughs> and and I just didn't do a good job. I, I no, the thing is, I would always forget. I would always forget what someone said. So I'd be like, oh, here, I thought this one was really great, but we've changed our ways, and so we're going to very beautifully leave you all with our new slogan keep your trowel in hand keep your gun rather loose in the holster